Hey guys, I thought I'd take you for a walk today. This walk is called the Via de la Rosa, the Way of the Red. This is the walk, and if you can imagine this, come with me. This is the walk. There are two traditional perspectives on this. One is the Catholic Way of the Cross that takes you down to the left. We're going to end up out through the Damascus Gate. But I want you to think about this. 2,000 years ago, it's been the Passover feast. Jesus has been in the temple. He's been teaching. He's been with his disciples. He's been healing the lame. He's been, watch your head, dealing with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes as their desire was to undermine his ministry. He's had on Thursday night that Last Supper with his disciples. He's washed their feet. They sang a psalm, a hymn. They went down the Brook Kidron. And then they were out at the Garden of Gethsemane. Gets a little crowded on this road. He was betrayed in the garden by Judas and taken to the court of Annas and Caiaphas. They took him over to Pilate. And of course, you remember, through a series of events, Pilate really wanted nothing to do with this man. So he sent him over to Herod. Herod didn't want anything to do with him either and basically said to Pilate, he's out of my jurisdiction, he's in your jurisdiction. He was sent back after he'd been so brutally mocked and derided. And he was scourged by Pilate's soldiers and you remember the process, of course. They took a whip that had pieces of metal and glass and rock beat into leather straps and, and they scourged him. They literally beat away all of the skin on his upper torso, his back and his stomach, his sides. He would have been literally a bloody mess. And the Roman soldiers mocked him and derided him and they brought him before Pilate. And Pilate in John 19 says, as he's looking at the crowd, thinking that this would satisfy their bloodthirst, says, behold the man. And, and yet they demanded all the more, crucify him, crucify him. And so they attached the patibulum, which was a hundred pound piece of wood to him, to his shoulders. And he would have walked down this road. Years ago, this would have been wider. Uh, even today, you see on one side, a, a marketplace, things being sold. You can smell the spices. Sometimes in certain places, the spices are literally overwhelming. And this would have been a crowded time in the city of Jerusalem, over 100,000 people, at least within the city precincts, coming to worship on the Passover. Young and old alike. The crowd certainly the crowd of those who'd been healed and touched by the ministry of Jesus, wondering what was happening. Some of them mourning, some of them sick with the things that they saw as they saw him bleeding profusely and carrying this cross beam up this road, this way, leaving a trail of blood and the crown of thorns had been plated and beat down upon his forehead and that vascular area, no doubt, bleeding profusely also. Women on the street as they watched him pass by, women who had heard him teach and who had maybe even been touched by him, maybe even lepers, watch your head on that one, maybe even lepers who had been healed and the lame who had been touched, the blind who were able to see, watching something they never thought they'd see. This wonderful, amazing man, this rabbi, this man of God, so brutally treated. In fact, the Bible says in Isaiah that he was beaten beyond recognition, beaten more than any other man had been beaten. His, his beard plucked from his face. Walking down these, this crowded corridor, the marketplace, making his way, of course, and partway through the passion of this, of course, as he was beaten for our transgressions. 
our iniquity was laid upon him. He was the Lamb of God who was slain for the sin of the world. He was the one who was out without spot or blemish. And as he was making his way, the Bible says that he quailed under the weight of that patibulum, that crossbeam. And the Roman garrison compelled Simon the Cyrene to take up that patibulum for him and to carry it the rest of the way. His clothes had been soaked with blood and the Roman soldiers had for a time put on a, a purple robe mocking him. They put a staff in his hand and they said, Hail King of the Jews. Pilate, wanting to release him, reminded them that they were able to take one and, and, and pardon that one and they chose Barabbas instead of Jesus and he would have made his way up this portion. crowded today, excuse me, old and young, people coming from all over the world to worship at the temple, the temple being the, the meeting place of God. Three times a year, it was a pilgrim feast, Passover and Pentecost and tabernacles, proselytes, God-fearers, Jews coming to make their sacrifice, not realizing that on this day, God had provided himself a sacrifice. Some of these stones, in fact, that we were just walking on were original stones, though the actual street is about nine to 12 meters or some 30 feet below us. The city of Jerusalem has been built upon and rebuilt upon a number of times, but they brought up some of these stones, maybe even some of the same stones that Jesus himself walked on. This Damascus gate that he would have walked out of is in the same location as the original Damascus gate. The original Damascus gate is under the existing. And he just as us today would have made his way through this crowded gate as Worshippers were coming and going. Jesus had prophesied to his disciples that, in fact, the, the temple, the amazing temple, the, one of the wonders of the world would ultimately be destroyed. Not one stone would be left standing and he would have made his way out the gate. At this point in time, it was still early in the morning he was crucified at 9 a.m. He would have made his way out this gate and up this precipice. The crowd being parted by the Roman soldiers, people probably not even, some of them not even realizing what was happening. He would have made his way up this portion of the precipice towards the city of Damascus, which is why this northern gate is called the Damascus Gate. Bleeding, suffering. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews reminds us that we need to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, who was the joy? Your salvation was the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father. Lots of technology today, so different today than it was then. We're gonna cross the street here. Today, the city is split into four different sections. You have the Armenian quarter, the Christian quarter, you have the Jewish quarter and you have the Muslim quarter. And today the significance of this city is no less than it was 2,000 years ago. In fact, the whole state of Israel is about the side of modern day New Jersey. And as small as it is, it's amazing to consider that the whole of the world is focused on this little plot of property. 
more, probably more religious diversity in the old city uh, in that small area than anywhere else in the world. And ultimately, everybody wants to claim it for themselves. And so as we proceed to Gordon's Golgotha, he would have continued his way up on the hill. The Roman centurions were prepared. Some of them, in fact, took sport in, in the execution of people. And he would have made his way up this, up this road. Gordon was in the British military and one day as he was looking from the top of the wall, he noticed a hill that looked like a skull. And in fact, as the excavations were done, they found a garden tomb and they found a garden, they found a wine press. So much of it fulfills exactly what the Bible tells us about where Jesus was crucified and not just where he was crucified, but ultimately where he rose again from the dead. And so the procession making its way, of course, you remember at this point the disciples, the majority of them had fled except for the women. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary of Magdalene, Salome, and of course, John the Apostle, the one whom Jesus loved together making their way to, to this place that's so special to us, this place that, that holds for us that point in time, that great transaction where God the Father laid upon His own Son the wrath that we deserve for our sins. And through His suffering and affliction, through His death and through His burial and resurrection, he was our propitiation. He appeased the holiness and the justice of God. And yet in one moment, simultaneously revealing God's immense, amazing love for all of humanity. For our forgiveness. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. And this is the place.